Character profile time. And I've been saving this one, Gemma. We, we, we've got our list of characters that we haven't done yet, and Robert Preston's um, been on, on there for a while. And uh, when uh, Tristan Gemmell announced that he was leaving earlier this year, I was like, oh, we'll be able to save that for whenever it happens. So at long last, here is our character profile of old Bobby P, who has hung up his chef's hat and gone, like to, great kitchen in the sky. gone to the big uh, kitchen where... Um, <laughs> In the How sky, are you I talking don't... about? That's what I just said. Kitchen home. Uh, you don't even know. Where I don't you even buy know what I'm talking from. about. Where do you get kitchen stuff from? I don't know. IKEA. Big IKEA in the sky. Um, so Robert Preston was born on the 22nd of October 1971. Yeah, not great. yet 50. His parents were Morris and Shirley Preston. Is it not Maurice? Maurice Morris. I don't know. Depends. Um, and he married Tracy in 1996, and then at some point after that. Classic character, Joni. I know. You, so you like about Robert, but if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have Joni. I know, I know. Um, now, Robert made his first appearance on Corrie on the 11th of November, 1996. So this is a, a long-term character, although he did have a somewhat of a gap in between. Um, and he's just um, just recently been in his 500th episode. So. Oh, oh, Robert's gone. He's yeah. not coming back. Don't be too sad, Gemma. I always get sad when they go. I, I, I'm sure we'll get over it. Um, in his first stint, which was um, on and off between 1996 and 2003, he was played by an actor called Julian Kay. And since then, obviously, or since 2015, uh, he's been back played by Tristan Gemelou. Tristan de Gemilia. Now, um, <laughs> it's quite funny when I was going through the... Um, the the profile of him and and trying to figure out about his early life because there's obviously some facts about him that were established in the show back in the 1990s and then there's kind of a jarring change of careers and then back to the uh, 1990s stuff again so bear with me as we go through this we know from his early life that he was brought up in Weatherfield and as a teenager he worked as um he worked in a restaurant and he his desire was to become a great chef nothing would get in the way of this um uh, of this dream um now we know that he had um he worked with rich collins and catherine his girlfriend and they started taking cocaine to cope with the pressure of being a chef all chefs are on drugs yeah um and catherine dies of an overdose and robert falls into a depression um and then he dates somebody <laughs> called, <laughs> and I almost want to say Jan here, but I think it was actually Jan that he dated for five years. And then he moved to London to work as a carpet fitter, as you do. When you, when you want to become the, the next great uh, chef, you're going to go to become a carpet fitter for five years. You have to really get your nimble fingers working. Yeah. So carpet fitter was what he was when we first met the character in 1996. Because earlier on that year off screen, um, he began dating Tracy. And I'm finding at the moment, and I can't remember exactly how it goes for the next couple of years, that Tracy has kind of almost, as good as left the show on classic Coronation Street at the moment. They're in 1994. Deirdre's uh, has been away because this is, ties in with when um, Anne Kirkbride had her non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Tracy's living a- away from the street. And I think in the mid-90s, she is back and forth and, uh, and away and, and, and back for a little bit. But at the beginning of 1996, she's living in London, uh, meets um, Robert, and then they, um, they get together and... Um, Robert first appears on screen in November of that year when he and Tracy have got engaged. And Ken and Deirdre aren't too happy with this, uh, considering that they, they've only just met him. And Tracy's only just met him. But when um, when they kind of get to know him a little bit better, they, they go, oh, go on then. Maybe this is, a, um, this is exactly what Tracy needs. So um, Robert's parents are a bit less enthusiastic about um, this, uh, this coupling. Robert disappears after his stag night and his dad reckons that he's probably gone off Tracy because, interestingly, he'd just found out that Tracy used to do drugs. And that would turn him right off. And, and he, was, uh, he, uh, he found this utterly abhorrent, despite the fact that in the later retcon continuity for Robert, he was also a massive druggie as well. I suppose you could look back on this and, uh, and have him say, well... Don't want to fall in. Don't want to crowd. fall into that again. But 
and anyway, for whatever reason, um, that wasn't why he'd actually disappeared. It turns out he was actually locked in a shipping container by one of his stags and his stag does. I mean, it happens. It does. Um, and his best man, Paul, had also gone um, AWOL with the, uh, engage- with the wedding rings. So Deirdre offered up Samir's ring for them to use on the ceremony so it could take place. Ken gives a lovely father of the bride speech. And he also says that this is the first time that he truly felt like Tracy's dad. That's it's a backhanded quite straight, compliment. Uh, quite sweet, I mean. Um, and they they disappear off to uh, London for a little bit. And that's the last we hear of Robert for a couple of years. Apart from in 1998, we've discovered that he finds Tracy kissing her, um, a friend of hers at a Christmas party. And he starts to become very jealous and possessive of her. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And then the following year, Tracy gets fed up of him being like this and breaks up with him before returning to Weatherfield. And this is when she comes in as... No, I think she's still Dawn Acton at this point, I think. Yeah. So Ken tells Robert that Tracy's come back here. You better come and chase after her if you still want to keep this marriage together. So he shows up on Coronation Street hoping for an apology. Doesn't get one. Um, because it turns out mm. that he'd also been unfaithful. Oh. However, when Tracy sees him turn down uh, an advance from Linda Sykes, she realises that she's... in a paycheck. No. <laughs> she realises that she still loves him, and they get back together. Oh, good. Reunion. Right. Jeremy, you can, do, you can do the next bit. 2002, Robert, what's he going up to? He kicks Tracy out after catching her in bed with his best fried... Friend. Forget my forget my typos. <laughs> um, she returns to Weatherfield with the story that he'd been caught cheating, but he puts Ken and Deirdre straight about this misunderstanding before leaving. This is quite interesting because this is two thousand and two, and both of us were watching at this point. But I don't remember any of this at all, and I think that this was by this point it was Kate Ford Tracy, and it was still Julian K Robert. And I don't do you re- do you have any recollection of this? Nope. I really, really don't remember. <laughs> um, so this was the last appearance of Julian Kay as Robert. And then he went on to have uh, small roles in shows like Casualty, The Royal, Hollyoaks. He was in Life on Mars. Ooh. And he also played Mr. Green in a BBC adaptation of Jacqueline Wilson's Girls in Love. Yeah. Then we have Tristan Jemil who comes in to play Robert. And he lived in Australia between the ages of 15 and 25. It's truth. It is the truth. <laughs> I had previously had roles in shows including Family Affairs, The Bill is in Casualty between 2007 and yeah, 2011. Yeah, he had a big old stint in Casualty, didn't yeah. he? Um, he was also um, in the lead role in the West End production of The Bodyguard between 2013 and 2014. I, I do hear that he's a bit of a hunk, so all these kind of roles I would say are quite befitting for him. Also, he was in Coronation Street in 2000 when he played a drugs counsellor for Leanne Battersby. Oh, OK. So I'm surprised Ty didn't recognise him. <laughs> yeah, so he was tied up in drugs in all sorts of ways in Coronation Street, old Robert. So in 2003, this didn't happen on the screen. No. But Robert's dad dies of cancer. Robert returns to London and then he becomes a chef. And somewhere... What are you doing? What? Sorry, no, I I don't know whether... I, that might be 2013. It doesn't matter. Well, somewhere Some between, in between. Uh, between the mm. last time he in appeared the dark in ages. 2002 and 2015, he also meets and marries the beautiful, wonderful, slightly wooden Joni. <laughs> and they open up a restaurant together called Preston's Grill. Yes. Which so is he's... not about teeth. It could also be a dentist. <laughs> so he's gone from chef to carpet fitter back to his original love of chefing again. Yeah. Just to be clear about this. Mm-hmm. So 2015 you was know, when... Why do you find it so remarkable that people do different jobs? I don't know. I think you just, I thought you just my, picked my, one. You know, You're assigned a job at birth. remember my old boss? Yeah. He used to be a tile fitter. And then he went into publishing and became a um, magazine editor. So... It just it's just because I know that in Robert's case there's been a lot of um you know, Retconic. chopping and changing and retconning of his Chopping of his and changing is part of what you have to do as a chef. There was a bit of a surprise that back in two thousand and fifteen when they said that they were gonna bring back this character of Robert that everybody thought had been lost to the mists of time and so many of the viewers at the time I think didn't know anything about the fact that Tracy used to be married to this guy. Um but he comes back to Weatherfield with a new head in time for Deirdre's funeral. 
and I remember all of this stuff happening because this was only a few years ago, wasn't it? Um, he uh, at the funeral that. Uh, uh, Tracy's reactions to Deirdre dying were a bit mixed. I think she was obviously quite um, distraught by it, but also Ken was having a go at her for driving Deirdre away for the last few months of her, of her life. Yeah, it was a bit with of a all weird of her situation. despicable behaviour. And then during the funeral, Tracy's uh, crying and Ken's having a go at her, saying that these are just crocodile tears. So she runs out of the church um, and. Uh, Robert goes to find her and comfort her, comforts her by Blanche's graveside. It was a bit weird that Robert turned up for Deirdre's funeral anyway. Considering, considering that considering... even really close relatives who aren't on the show anymore always just phone their excuses in. Yeah, and this Quite is somebody that, that hadn't seen Deirdre for a good like 12, 13, 14 years. But never mind that. Don't dwell on it. And, and this didn't go down with a lot of viewers very well because after he com- comforts Tracy, he takes them back to number one and they start to have it off on the sofa, do you remember? And people were like, don't, don't think this is appropriate for a funeral episode of a much-loved character whose actress also died recently and now you're having Tracy bonking her ex-husband on the, on the day. Um, I, I don't think I like that. So, but they're, they're interrupted uh, mid-session by Liz because Ken's told Liz to go back to number one to go and get Tracy. And, and Ken is not too pleased with the fact that this is what Tracy's been up to either. Ken is always... Throws Robert out. You can't tell me Ken is not absolutely thrilled when he discovers Tracy up to something else that she shouldn't be doing. He loves it. <laughs> he loves telling her off so much. He's, he rubs his hands together whenever he lives she's He lives for up. it, doesn't yep. he? Um, so Robert admits to Tracy that the main reason that he came back for Deirdre's funeral it wasn't anything to do with Deirdre at all. Actually. It was just he, he he's yeah he missed missed Tracy despite the fact that he was married to Jonah. He still got feelings for her, and he tries to get back into Ken's good books by cooking them a stuffed marrow, which is obviously Deirdre's signature recipe. And they have to admit that actually Robert did a much better job than Deirdre did with it. Oh, um, so this is when Joni showed up, played by Sarah Harding. Yeah. Um, and finds out from Norris that Robert's been courting Tracy. And Tracy learns about Tell this. Tell you what, Sarah Harding did make Kim Marsh look brilliant. <laughs> by, by proving that it's not just an effortless move from well, girl band to actress. <laughs> Tracy finds out about Joni because I think he, uh, if I remember rightly, he kept that um, aspect of his under life his under his, his hat, hat a little bit. Oh, yeah. And, um, and Robert's, because Robert tells her, oh, yeah, Joni's just a restaurant manager at uh, the, the place that I have in, in uh, Nottingham. Is it Nottingham? Or is that Nick? That was Nick. Yeah, Nick. Um, anyway, so Tracy and Beth go to Robert's work to surprise him one day. And this is when... Um, that they... was when Tracy and Beth were still busy mates. I think they still are a little they bit, are, aren't they? Theory. But they were, they were proper good mates then, weren't they? They were always gossiping they? together. But yeah. So anyway, Robert sees them there and ushers them out because obviously Jodie's there and he doesn't want to... Uh, let them know about his secret wife but Joni sees him kiss Tracy goodbye and gives her a good old slap um, and she's left pretty humiliated by this Joni demands that Robert signs everything over to her and the marriage is over and that's pretty much the last that we see of her so she's going to be upset when she finds out that oh, he's yeah. dead oh are we going to have a return she should come back for the funeral yeah I, mean, I don't it... imagine he's going to get a funeral I I well, I wonder because Michelle's obviously not even staying no, around not for it, is she? For... That's so sad. I know. I don't know what's what the situation is with Robert's mum. We obviously know his dad's dead. I can't remember what he said about his mum, but no one cares about him. Yeah, there's literally nobody left to grieve him. Is sad. there? Tragic, really. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Robert moves onto the street. Then he gets a job as the chef at the bistro. Um. And eventually. Tracy starts to uh, warm up to him again and uh, they're, they're dating before long. Tracy moves him into number one. Um, I think I remember him not being too thrilled with the idea of bringing up Amy as well. No, um, but Amy. in December, uh, Robert finds out that Tracy has been visiting Rob Donovan no, in prison. No, not Bob Donovan. Ex, and rather than propose to her on Christmas Day, he reveals her trips to the prison to everybody and then ceremoniously dumps her. Harsh. Little did he know that in four years' time, he'd also... he'd Have be, a really, uh, another really crap Christmas day. Yeah, yeah, Christmas not so good for Robert. Yeah. And uh, he spends... Should have stayed in bed. He spends New Year's Eve drowning his sorrows in a casino where he bumps into 
and um, then goes to bed with Carla Connor. Four. But then they regret it. Oh. 2016. <laughs> he buys a 20% share of the bistro and gets back together with Tracy, who has seduced him by doing that old trick that I learned about at girls' school, naming her florists after him. Do you think Do you think that it's still going to be named after him as in, in tribute, tribute, or is she like... He, was, he never got back with me, he's dead. It, it always felt weird that she kept that name for quite so long anyway. I know, like, we really were expecting her to change it at one point, weren't we? And she didn't do... When she over... Did she do a makeover in there? I can't remember because it had been Barlow's Buys beforehand, hadn't it? It was the, um, yep. the Bring and Buy shop. And before that it was the book is. Take a Punt on Me or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It, it felt like it was named Preston's Petals, that little bit of a story, yes, yeah. which never went anywhere. Yep. And then they just stuck with it. I hope he gets discount flowers if he, if he does get a funeral. She, Tracy would never do discount fun, uh, funeral flowers for her next husband. I just want to see some some kind of reaction from Tracy at some point over the next uh, sort of couple of weeks. I mean, even her, Amy should be a bit sad squeeze. about it. Yeah, I know. Um, anyway, she's named the florist after him to try and get him back. Um, one night she hides in the bistro kitchen in her undies trying to surprise Robert. But then she overhears him talking to Carla about the fact they'd slept together. Oh. And then after Robert leaves, Tracy confronts Carla. And then... Um, oh, she... that, that's when the bistro gets invaded. I think that might be the first appearance of the bistro ninjas, possibly. I'm not sure. But the bistro gets raided. And doesn't isn't that when Carla gets dragged along the road? Oh, yeah, in a handbag. And then... Um, Pat, <laughs> I'm sure there's a handbag Pat involved. Jumps so out. Yeah, Pat jumps out. Oh yeah, that was the check the chips he bit, wasn't the chips it? On the floor. Yeah, I that remember that. That was such a man. sad day. <laughs> Those chips will never be good for anything, apart from seagulls. Um, Carla is terrified that Tracy is going to tell um, fiance Nick about the fact that he she had slept with. Yeah, Carla's fiance. That Robert. Is. Yeah. What did I say? No, no, you just said fiance. I'm just saying okay. who's fiance. Um, and she says, look, I'll give you 10 grand to add to Robert's fund so that he can buy the rest of the bistro. Yeah, yeah. Carla does that to keep to keep Tracy quiet. Yeah. So this right. is when Robert can, yeah, take so Robert's control in of the, the bistro. bistro. But he's absolutely terrible. At, he might be a good chef, but he's a terrible boss. And the Allens are down and working there. They quit pretty soon. And then Robert does a deal with Nick and the two of them end up with 50-50 share of the business. I kind of lose track over the years of who's got... It's the same... It's bad enough just with the factory, isn't it? Who's got what shares? And it's really not that interesting. But yeah, by the end of the 2016, him and Nick are at halvesies. That's how how they wrote it in the So that was was pretty much the end of Robert and Tracy after that year. um, Because by 2017, um, he's dating Michelle... And she'd been going out with Steve for all this time before then, and we were wondering what was going to happen next to her. But they, yeah, I think when they put them together, I was like, oh, God, don't like either of these characters. Is it is it good that they're together? Because at least it means that they're not going to, you know, drag any other characters down, or is it going to be bad because, you know, are their, are their powers of dullness going to magnify now they're in... Over... It can go either way. So... The, this is when um, the, his past comes back to haunt him. Yes, Rich and his retcon story. Rich, this guy that he used to work with in the in the restaurant when he was a teenager, turns up and he demands that Robert launder drugs through the bistro, or he's going to tell Michelle about his druggy past. And Robert's like, right, I don't want, I don't want, to, to, no. I'm not going to be doing that. Actually, I'm a good law-abiding citizen, and so they have a bit of a scrap. This is when Chesney gets stabbed with a broken bottle as well. And then he tries to tries to make him interesting by having PTSD, but it doesn't work. Doesn't, doesn't work, does it? No. Uh, so Robert tricks Rich after this by pretending that he wants drugs and getting the police in to arrest him. Meanwhile... And Rich is like, way, that does how ha- what? You can't do that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Michelle is being stalked by Will. Remember Specky Will? Will. Specky glasses, glasses on, glasses off Will. And when he ties her up in the back of the car, Michelle and Robert suspect that it's actually Rich doing it. So Robert says, don't you tie my missus up in the back of the car. Don't tie her up. I'm going to beat you up, Rich. 
So he, he earns himself a two-month sesh in prison for take away GBH. His just for men. Yeah, and and it's so terrible in there that it turns in grey, as Daniel referred to in uh, this week's Corey. Soon after Robert gets released, he's diagnosed with testicular cancer because he just can't worse. catch a break. That Robert. Is, but, has no, he noticed could be worse. this all could since be, he started could be dating shot. Michelle? I think you're right. I think it, she she is. She sucks the life out of everyone. Steve had a lucky escape. He did a bit. Um, so he ends up running a huge gambling debt. He goes back to the casinos again because he's so miffed about having testicular cancer. Although that particular story did get sold relatively quickly, if I remember rightly. Um, and Michelle um, has to rob the bistro to pa- as part of an insurance scam to get the money to clear his gambling debts. Yeah, it was a really involved and clever scheme, mm. which involved her. She's got away saying, with it. She's oh, g- the card machine doesn't work. Nobody oh, knows no, what will happen. And now she's away in Ireland. The secret will. Uh, Robert's taken it to the grave yeah, with him. Brilliant. So has so is Rana because I think Rana found out, didn't she? Only Kate knows, I think. Now, right, two thousand and eighteen. Robert persuades Ali. He's turned up back on the street again to try and rebuild his relationship with Michelle, and then they have a fun run. Um, because Robert gets really, really into exercise. Oh yeah, he does. I, I think it's like, after. I'm still a real man. I'm still a real man. It is. It's after he has his one of his balls chopped off. Yeah. He? He's, he's like, I'm not gonna have them sing a song about me like Hitler. I'm gonna <laughs> prove that I'm still really buff and cool. And he goes on a fun run, and then he proposes to Michelle, and but she's so thrilled. Was 2018 the year that they did the? Um, it was. That was when they had the boxing as well, wasn't it? And he got really into that. And he, there were lots of scenes of him biffing up the. Uh, yeah, biffing and buffing. The, the swinging. 60s. No, you know, what is it? I know what you mean. It's boxing the thing. Boxing oh, I've got no idea. machine man. In the, uh, in the viaduct. Um, he has a little steroid addiction story which goes wrong because he has a, a heart attack. Yeah, that was another one that was like, like the testicular cancer. It seemed like... No, it got brought back up again because Michelle says to the police. Yeah, but it's at the oh, time it felt really like angry. it was over and done with in a blink of an eye. Oh, but you're moaning. Shut up. Robert and Michelle arranged to get married but nearly goes wrong. Because she, he sees her trying to kiss Steve. And then it goes really wrong because Pat Phelan <laughs> bursts in and shoots her. <laughs> oh, no. How ironic that she was the only one that ended up uh, meeting his maker. Dead, yeah. Come thanks to being shot in the stomach. Should have oh, Michelle. Moaning on the floor, shot. Robert has Can't to Can't escape keep... the Reaper. You can just divert him to your spouse. Just go. Uh, 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 Not me, uh, him, him. Look over there. Um, Robert then has to keep the family secret because he finds out Ali deliberately killed Ronan in the car to put him out of his misery. Still not been resolved, that story. No, that's that's dead now as well. Uh, that's going to come back. I know, but the only one left now who knows is Ryan. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Michelle's not going to say anything. Left. She's not going to come He's back to dead. Ireland. So, yeah. That's a bit weird. Anyway, he says, oh, do you know what? I really like kids. And she goes, no, uh. And then he says... Oh, okay. She says, uh, because I had Rory. Uh, I hate children because they die. <laughs> <laughs> they die before they're ready. Um, she goes, he goes into cahoots with Kate and Rana who are looking for a donor. A sperm donor. Yeah. And, and so they want to raise this baby and he's just desperate to, to spread his seed. Then he changes his mind and Michelle says, actually, well, maybe I will have a baby. But then she... Into, oh, yeah. You can do this one. I did. Do All right. So Michelle, at the beginning of this year, thought that she was pregnant. But then she got hit by a football in the stomach. Oh, oof. And then um, it turns out that... I don't think... I can't remember whether it's she that she wasn't, wasn't actually pregnant. pregnant. No, she wasn't she, pregnant. She, she, gets, she gets... She just goes, oh, I really have a feeling that I'm pregnant. It's like, it could be wind. Oh, yeah, it was, isn't it? Could be wind. So she tells Carla, this is this is too much pressure. I can't go through this pregnancy. How can I guarantee again. I'll never be hit in the stomach by a football again? This yeah. is too much for me. Yeah, and, and so... Um, she says to Robert, look, just you, you better leave me because you want the baby. I'm not having one of them. Um, we'll never be able to make each other truly happy. So off you go. You can, and she she implies you can go and have a relationship with whoever you want now, Robert, because you're free and single. So what does he go and do? He goes exactly over to that. to me. He does exactly that. It's like if your wife says, you say, "What's wrong?" and she says, "Nothing." You, you it's not nothing. <laughs> you don't believe it. So this is when he meets up with Vicky, um, and he helps Tyler get a job at the bistro. But um, Michelle says, "Like I'm not having him working here because he just." Uh, knocked up Amy Barlow and it's going to be bad for business so he um, he gets rid of him but helps him get a 
helps Tyler to get a job at a friend's restaurant. And this is where he gets all involved in the Young Offenders, which was his go-to excuse for the rest of the year when he was off doing yeah. naughty things he with He could have Vicky. gone, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> I'm just laying some carpets, my other yeah, passion, my passion in life. We haven't seen him lay a single carpet in the past four to years. To be fair, nobody's needed show. a carpet laying, have they? It's not a thing they do because in Coronation Street, as far as you know, nobody actually has a carpet because you never see the floor. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> Maybe that's why he was never really fulfilled on the street. It's like everyone has hardwood floors. <laughs> it's really not, not the place for me. Um, so he gets into this relationship with Vicky, but then when he rekindles things with Michelle, he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Vicky and stay with you, Michelle." But then he changes his mind because Vicky turns out to only be pregnant. What? And and th- this was when uh, we were wondering about who was the the factory saboteur, and lots of people thought it was Robert because after the factory roof collapsed, he went off the radar for a little bit, didn't he? And I think he'd also not long beforehand, told Carla that he wanted to see her dead or something. I don't like you. Um, so we were wondering what was going on there, but it turned out that he was having a very happy life over in um, Macclesfield with uh, with Vicky and Tyler, and they seemed like they had a the nice little family unit going on Oh, he there. should have stayed there. Um, so, but yeah, he's, he's now trapped in this um, love triangle with Vicky and Michelle, and he has to lead a double life for months, pretending to Vicky he's not actually seeing Michelle and telling Michelle that he's away in Stoke working with the young offenders. And then he accidentally gets engaged to both of them. Wah, wah. It's bound to happen. Oh no, I hate that when that happens. Michelle learns the truth. She pretends to forgive Robert and go ahead with another wedding. But that's actually just an excuse to jilt Robert at the altar and read out a load of his sexy texts from Vicky. Oh, it was like Titanic, but somebody did have to die. And it was Jack again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Rose pushed him off the bloody <laughs> door. And this is basically the, the last few months of Robert has been the, the fallout of that. Michelle and Vicky scheming against him to try and get him locked away for a crime he never committed. Because you could, there's no um, jail sentence for a crime of passion, which is the one he actually committed. Um, and then he gets shot, basically. <laughs> yeah. He, he was, it, yeah, his baby gets born. Michelle, we already talked he, about this earlier this episode. He did doesn't he get to see the baby. That's, That's so tragic. sad. And Poor it's, Robert. But thanks. I tell you what, though, he did get his wish at the end. He did get to father a child. He got to father, yeah, he's the, the, the Robert line continues. Pressed in petals of fallen. Yeah. Do he's, you reckon that um, Vicky's going to tell Sonny about? Robert. It's really difficult to know, isn't it? It is. And I, because I, really, you don't, you don't have to even write down anything on the birth certificate. No. And it, the way that she'd been talking about Robert up until the Christmas Day episode was that she was seemed perfectly happy to completely you know, let him, let Robert have nothing to do with him. Mm. She'd been totally scorned by him, although she was so, so into him earlier this year. She was head over heels with Robert. And I think now that now that he's died. And we did see her grieving with Michelle on yesterday's episode, didn't we? I think she's probably, despite the fact that he was two-timing her, eventually will realise that he, he wasn't such a bad one. And and, and Sonny's going to ask, who's my dad? And yeah, I think by I the mean... time all this time has passed that Sonny's inquiring about him, maybe Vicky will say, ah, oh, he was sure. He wasn't perfect, but who is? I know, but what... He was a great chef. Wouldn't it be rubbish, though, to grow up knowing your dad died on Christmas Day? And not having known him, you still get Christmas ruined. People, uh. people die at Christmas ruin it. Everybody. <laughs> so, so selfish. I know, it really is. But do you know what I mean? Like, you would always, on Christmas Day, you'd always think, oh, my dad died on Christmas Day and I never knew him. Well, maybe Vicky can just tell him that he died. You know, I would. Christmas I think Eve I, or I think Boxing Day or something. Lie. No, ruin a rubbish day that no one likes. Like, um, International Flag Day or something. Mm, okay, well, I'm sure that the, she, she can twist the truth a little bit. But I, I, feel, I do feel sorry for Sonny that he'll, he'll never know his dad. But, I mean, it's, I, I'm guessing, that I, I'm sure this will never be resolved. Vicky has literally gone to, to be with Jed and Sonny will grow up with... Jed being his dad, and, and Tyler's his he brother. won't know the tr- Yeah, but it, Tyler knows. That sounds rife for a spin off, doesn't it? Know, like in 15 Irish years' time. Yeah, if suddenly actually finds out that Jed's not his dad after all. 
Yeah, yeah. True. I think it's weird as well that um, that we've seen the last of Tyler, possibly. Yeah. And, and we we never got to say a proper goodbye to him. And there was a yeah. mini goodbye to Vicky yesterday. But Tyler, oh, no, what's really going? Fair. No, and and, but, there were, and it was well, never resolved. No, with, not what? necessarily because yeah, him, him, him and, Amy, and Amy, perhaps that's they might, might still be, be texting. <clears throat> Uh, I don't but know. I do think Tyler would tell Sonny about his dad because he really did like Robert. He did, but not not well, at the at end. At the end, yeah, I know. But do you not think that you might sort of forgive him his transgressions because he got shot? I think Vicky's more likely to forgive him than Tyler. Tyler doesn't strike I know, but me I think as... Tyler might soften if his mum... I don't know, anyway. Mm. Anyway, that is the <laughs> end of Robert. And it's been quite a long time coming, this exit, because it was only it was back in April, way back in April, that Tristan announced that he was leaving on Twitter. He said, folks, I just wanted to let you know that the time has come for me to hang up the chef's gear and head for pastures new. There is still a lot of drama and shenanigans to come for Robert, but I'll be leaving Corrie later this year. It was true. He did have plenty of drama and shenanigans, didn't he? He did, didn't, didn't he? he? He had loads of them. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. When when it was announced that he and Kim were leaving, I was I was on the one hand very happy, and th- and especially after all the other characters had left, that I didn't want to. Like, I didn't want Gina to leave. Didn't want Rana to leave. There's a whole load of people earlier in the year that went the, before their time, but then these two almost cancelled out. You're but, such a bitch. But I was thinking, oh, it does mean we're going to get a, a long story with them and um i think honestly looking back on it i don't i don't feel too bad about how this story was at the time it felt like it was dragging on forever but yeah i think i've got relatively good memories of the vicky robert michelle story now have you yeah i'm i'm a bit of a i'm a bit of a goldfish when it comes to stories, and I only just remember the last th- my last emotion about it. It was a bit ridiculous that Michelle was so oblivious to the fact that Robert was constantly disappearing off for... I just have this... Uh, these lengthy yeah. amounts of time, and I mean, saying, this, Stoke, young offenders. This really vivid memory of just Robert's shifty look, and it just seemed like it was constantly on his face the entire year, like, just shifty look going, yep, I'm going to Stoke again. Mm-hmm. Would you say that he was, he's left a villain and <clears throat> did he deserve to have that ending? He wasn't a villain. But, but He was a very naughty boy. He, he spent, it felt like we had four years of Robert just being really boring. He was like <laughs> one of the most dull characters on the street. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know what it was about him he just didn't inspire any kind of enthusiasm for me at all he was just a solid bloke wasn't he he was just like a bloke yeah but he he just didn't feel like he had much of a personality personality, and anything that he did have was sucked away from him from michelle when she took over his life and I, i did kind of like how they gave him a bit more of a personality towards the end and and being a bit of a wronger and a bit of a bad lad is better than just going out dull because kate she went out dull, didn't she? And I think that Robert had a lot better and more memorable exit than she did. Yeah. So, but I did kind of feel bad for him. I I, I liked how he was a bit of a grey character. <laughs> I'm not talking about his haircut here. Um, the fact that we were kind of supposed to feel sorry for him. I mean, definitely, there, there was no, like, triumph, like like a... Like it's, you might get a love rat or a, or a villain that's gunned down in the street usually, and then it's and it's a a moment of elation for for plenty of characters, and people say, "Hooray, he's dead at last." There was none of that when he was when he was shot and he was staggering down the road. I oh. I can't imagine that there were a lot of people going, "Ah, he's dead at last. He deserved that that love rat. He he treated Vicky and Michelle so badly. He totally had this coming." It was it was it was written and shot and played as a a tragic accident wasn't it yeah i thought it was really well done and despite despite all his indiscretions of the year nobody deserves to to have that and the and the way that they had that little um his little dog uh you know the um the little cuddly dog that he'd bought for sunny Aww. there on the street and he was reaching out for oh, it no. it was tragic um and 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 in a way it's made some the story has made some of uh, the last few months of May Michelle a bit more of an interesting character. 
some some of the time in this story was like thinking, oh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what Michelle does next. I felt felt yeah, a bit I more sympathetic I, for her. I was kind of getting into it. And that and that moment when she uh, reads out the text at the wedding yeah, was that was brilliant. Was quite cool. Um. So, I don't know. I, I was it worth bringing him back after all those years and resurrecting the character. I don't know whether the show would have been worse off if they hadn't. But I don't know. Yeah, well, he's he's given us some memorable moments, hasn't he? So I'm I'm, I'm interested to know. I can't um, believe you didn't put in about him shucking in the freezer. Oh How yeah. How did that happen? Um, was that idea this year? Shaking in the freezer? I don't know. Um, Fun times. Uh, do you think that because um, because he was a suspect for the roof saboteur? Do you think that the the this year could have supported that if they'd gone down that route? Do you think we would have had all this stuff with the, the love triangle as well as him being the roof saboteur? If what it if he still him? left as well? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what because I think I think we were we were quite convinced. It, oh no, did we think it was him or did we think it was Nick? I don't remember. We definitely didn't think it was Gary. But um, oh, I don't know. Right. Um, yeah, I don't really know what you. I don't really know what you're getting at. No, I'm just saying that if if Corey had decided to make him the person who sabotaged who sabotaged the roof. the roof as well, would that have been too much for his character? If they were also going to have this love triangle story, or would they have just just gone down that route and could they because a lot of what's happened to gary could have happened to robert couldn't they? I, mean, I, could, I could have seen robert you know getting in, involved in all the trouble that gary's got into i could see I robert being a lone shark no i can't no you no, know is no. he no. too dull for it too nice yeah just no mm. um okay Anything else to say about Robert or Tristan? We met Tristan no, once, we didn't did. we? No, we did. We met him. He has got a very posh voice, is not he? He doesn't sound like Robert. He doesn't in real sound like life. Robert in real life. Yeah. Um, so he was nice. Did you say? We, didn't you say we don't like Robert to him? I don't think we did. I thought you did. I don't remember. You're, you're too honest. I know. <laughs> um, yeah. So he he's gone. Um, I'm really sad he's gone of... now. I can't believe he's gone. I I really like I said earlier. I'm always I'm in denial about about it when Corey, Corey characters leave. I'm like, no, it can't be true. It can't be over. Please say it's not true. I don't think... even if I don't like them. Even Michelle's like, oh, Michelle's gone. Why? I think that it's going to be weirder not having Michelle than Robert. I think it's not going to take us very long at all to. I know, but that's also sad. Forget to Robert or oh, to. Oh no, it's just like in. He's um, not exactly a linchpin of the street, where the picture is he? Disappears. <laughs> I think I think Corey will get on just fine without him. Well, it is pretty exciting that he set up a new storyline with Ray as uh, the evil bistro villain. Yeah, and Robert I and Michelle's can only memories imagine will live on. That uh, one of the first dastardly deeds he does is to try to copy Betty's hot pot recipe <laughs> to capture that trade. Well, we, he needs to get a copy of that mystery of the Betty's hot pot DVD that we just True. got for Christmas. Yeah, that you got yeah. for Christmas, and then find out from there. I think he'll open like a combination greasy spoon. Hot pot and uh, curry house. Definitely. Try and steal everyone's business. Definitely. Better not start selling Costa. <laughs> well, well done, Robert. You were very dull, but you managed to get a little You're bit so more mean. interesting by the end. I thought he was great. No, you didn't. All the way through. <laughs>